Good morning. Welcome to another episode of Below the Line. My name is Ifna Lusaimeka from Brainbox Marketing. And today we have a really important guest with us by the name of Mr. Tsunji Adeinka. Good morning. It's a pleasure to have you on our platform Very this morning. Um, and just so you know, Mr. Tunde, uh, Mr. Tunji is the incoming president of Exmat. So congratulations again Thank you very on much. your election Thank as you. our president. Thank you very much. Okay, so by way of introduction, please let us know your name, what you do, and that. Okay, my name is Tunji Adeinka. Um, I, uh, by way of study, I studied English and history, my first degree. Yes, that's, okay. Uh, A lot of us <laughs> studied really like different things. Exactly. Um, and then uh, went to University of Illori. Okay. Uh, and then studied uh, after that, I got uh, an M a master's degree from University of Ife, uh, mm -hmm. which is in international relations. Uh, I started to work. Um, as a copywriter in an advertising agency. Mm -hmm. That was my very first job. Um, and I also have an MBA uh, from uh, Lagos Business School on the ISA side. I um, work currently as the Group Managing Director of the mm -hmm. Republican Group. Mm -hmm. And I am also uh, an Executive Director uh, in Connect Marketing, which is a below-the-line company. Um, I am married, I'm happily married, and I have two kids. So that's two GLE. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so at at what point did you say to yourself you should get involved in below the land marketing? I think it was kind of accidental because my first few years um, were actually spent in copywriting. Okay. Um, so I started to, to work in a Sachi agency in those days, it was called MCNA as a copywriter. That was actually how my career started. Um, and after spending some years there, uh, I moved out, joined another agency, and then another agency. Uh, but I was finally then uh, recruited by Tequila, uh, which was by then one of the early companies that were actually doing direct marketing below the line. Um, and started work in Tequila, uh, and that was where I got into below the line marketing. Uh, and after spending years in tequila, uh, did some good business, then I moved to MTN um, as, as, uh, as the head of sponsorships um, okay. and affinity marketing in those days. And then later on, uh, left MTN as a general manager uh, in the marketing and strategy department. So you've tested client side as well as the agency. Agency, correct. So Correct. if you were to come back again, mm. a second life, would you still choose this part, that is the agency part, or would you rather be a client? Um, is that a political question? <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> is that a political question? It's, I just want uh -huh. to know, because so there, I've seen people who, mm. you know, feel like the agency life is tough. It's, yeah. It's a lot of work. Yeah. You are. Yeah. You are. And at times, it seems like there is not enough respect mm -hmm. according to the profession. Mm -hmm. But once you're on the brand side, you're on yeah. the client side, it seems like everybody says, oh, you're the brand manager. Mm -hmm. You're putting in all the work. Mm -hmm. But in my opinion is the brand managers or the brand management team mm -hmm. really do need the agencies. Yes, correct. Correct. You're right. So um, I, I love working the agency side. Mm -hmm. I, I love working as a problem solver. Um, and on the agency side, what you tend to have is that you um, you are not fixated on one problem or yes. the problem of one brand. Of one brand so yes. you have a diverse experience working on different brands, different services, and so on and so forth. So for me. Um, uh, working on the agency side has been very exciting, very fulfilling. Uh, but I, I must say that you know, also there's also there's also a very good benefit to working on the client That's side as right. well, because uh, you need to feel the pain points, you need to mm -hmm. understand um, how value That's is true. measured, and That's so true. on and so forth. So uh, yeah, I love working on the agency side. Okay, so now with the amount of time spent in the agency side, 
what are the issues, the challenges that you think agencies are currently going through? And and it's this is a really valid question because you are coming in as the president of Exmat. Yeah. And so what are the issues that you have seen in the industry and in what way is Exman helping or what are the plans that Exman has in mitigating or um, answering these issues? Okay. Um, one of the uh, challenges is actually based on the structure of the, of the industry. Uh, we have a fragmented structure um, where you have a lot of agencies. Uh, the barrier to entry is low. Um, which then means that you tend towards commoditization, mm. uh, which means that you tend towards playing on pricing yes. and, and not so much on you know, um, other measures of value. Yes. And that then means that as, as long as you have this low profitability uh, from an industry point of view, yes. then you are going to have challenges with investment, you're going to have challenges with uh, 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 putting money into that industry. Um, also, uh, some of this stems from the fact that you also uh, also then, you know, some uh, as an industry, we need to be fixated on providing value. Um, and sometimes you find that that may not be the case in some cases. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not talking about this across the, the industry gambit, but I'm saying that what the client is looking for is yes. value mm -hmm. um, and the measure of value is in how your solutions help me to solve my fundamental business problems yes. but the challenge that you then tend to have on the agency side because of the fragmentation mm. is that the client is knocking heads together yes and understands that the there's a there's a red ocean and the client is shopping for free ideas sure. um, a lot of times. Yes. Um, and again, I am very careful to say that this, I'm not saying this as a generic, I'm not saying this applies to every client, yes. but that is where the challenge comes. Because if you don't pay for the value, yes. uh, then you are not likely to continue to get value. Mm -hmm. um, and because the industry is fragmented, um, agencies fight for jobs and they keep cutting and cutting and cutting and cutting until someone yes, gets yes. the job yeah yes. um, and in all of this um, you then find that the agencies are struggling um, struggling because it's a fragmented market yes. struggling because again the value orientation is not necessarily there um, because you have to ask yourself, why do this client, the same clients pay management consultants mm. um, good money and not yes. um, marketing consultants the same kind of money? It's about value and perceived value, mm. uh, which, which, which they, they, they look at. So, and how do you solve that problem? Uh, there are certain things that need to be done from an industry perspective, and they're very tough, uh, but they're also very difficult to, 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 to do. Because if you look at a lot of agencies as well, you find that um, the governance structure is just not there. Um, therefore, if the governance structure is not there, you find it difficult to get investment. You find, find it difficult to get investment. You find it difficult to get good resources and good talents. Um, you find it difficult to get good resources and talents. You find it difficult to offer value to the customer mm. or the client. So it's all just going round yes. and round that way uh, so we need to properly structure the industry um, and structuring that industry means that we need to build value uh, okay. into into our businesses and and build governance into our businesses mm -hmm. and have visions for our businesses that goes beyond a one room mm -hmm. one portfolio yeah okay my next question would be so x-men is a body but there are a lot of agencies yes. outside the X-Men body. Yeah. Meaning that client is free, yeah. willing and able yeah. to go to agencies mm -hmm. within X-Men versus without, within, um, outside X-Men. Yeah. Now, 
meaning that whatever policy or constitution we choose to abide in, in abide by yeah. as X-Man agencies, mm. non-X-Man agencies do not need to abide by those policies. Correct. And that already creates some form of discord yeah. within the industry. Yeah. How is X-Man or what are your plans mm. for X-Man to ensure that there is a bit of solidarity mm. within all agencies, regardless of it being whether you are already an X-Man agency mm -hmm. or not, or what are the plans to ensure or push mm. that we have a lot more agencies mm. in the body? So X-Man is about eight years now, okay. um, and we technically have slightly i think over 40 uh paying members okay um but x-man why should you be a member of x-man uh, that's the first question there's some, several reasons why you should be a member of x-man and why should you use an x-man member as a client first is the level of professionalism okay. in x-man membership uh, agencies is very high because before you can become a member of X-Man, there's yes. certain things you need to go through. Okay. Um, indeed, we inducted about, I think, two new members um, at the AGM yesterday. But if you look at what they've had to go through to qualify yeah. as members, yes. we check out their governance structure. Okay. We check out their annual reports. Okay. We check out the different different departments they have in the in the organization okay. um, we check um, the x-man code against what they have existing to okay. ensure that they're running an ethical practice and um, and then we get recommendations also from other people okay. when they pass through those stages we actually do physical visits we have a membership committee uh, that does physical, physical visits and manages all of this. Yeah. So when you are working with an X-Man agency, you are working with an agency that has already been pre-qualified. Pre-qualified in terms of the ethics, yeah. pre-qualified in terms of the structure, yeah. and pre-qualified in, in terms of the value that they bring. Okay. So um, X-Man agencies also have access to a lot of training and thought leadership programs through the year. Um, one of them is the is the one that we we're ending today, which is the Brand Experience Summit, which has over 44 speakers talking from governance to scaling businesses to um, the structure of the structure of the business to the yes. technical areas and the rest of them. So that is another reason why mm -hmm. an X Man agency will be heads um, above any other agency. So those are the reasons why, as a client you are working within a group of agencies that have the professional gravitas. Okay. Also, um, because we are governed by a code, okay. also means that if there's any, if any of our members errs, you can recourse, take a recourse with X-Men and then we can reprimand we have the ways that we discipline yeah. our members um, if, if you're not an x-man member if you're a client and you use someone who's not an x-man member those things are not they don't apply unfortunately yeah. so these are some of the reasons why as a client um, we encourage you to work with an x-man member yeah. um, so how do we then work to attract non-members um, over the years we've always published and is on our website if you want to be a member of X-Man, uh, these are the things that you need to fulfill. Yes. Um, and you have enough time and you have enough support to, to actually do that. Yes. Um, you have a kind of mentorship from the, the membership team um, who help you and guide you through that process. Um, and, and, I, and I must say that at every AGM, we've always, always brought in new members. Um, so our doors are open. Um, but as you also understand that they're not the doors are not ajar so so that you just ensure that you uh, preserve the quality yes. um, and not just look at the quantity okay. yeah okay. um then this question is around our bodies yeah so apcon yes 
as at yesterday it had been announced that any um agency now trying to join x-men yes the owner yes the ceo yeah. needs to have an upcoming certification correct yeah so my question is first of why does there need to be a correlation mm -hmm. between upcom yeah and experiential marketing okay and second question would be in place of an upcom certification yeah why shouldn't there be an experiential marketing certification okay that should be gotten mm -hmm. by owners of btl agencies mm -hmm. which would then make you um able yeah. to join x1 fine thank you very much for that question so x-man just like triple a n just like mepan yes are trade or sector groups yes they represent a certain sector okay. within the marketing um, services value chain advan is also a sector okay. yes. which is the, the, the clients so okay. i'm very sorry about that so uh all of these sectors uh, are sector groups yeah um they are not backed by law. When I say law, we have constitutions. Yeah. Um, they are self-regulatory groups. Yes. Members come together and they say, we need to organize this industry. And it starts. And, yeah, exactly. Okay. And then everybody agrees and then we put those structures together. But APCON is the government regulated and okay. recognized group. Okay. And APCON is the umbrella group that brings together every practitioner of marketing. Okay. So APCON is the umbrella group that brings together X-Man, MIPAN, AAAN, OAN, and the rest of them. So APCON is by law then um, given the right to license practitioners. Okay. Uh, because when you have a law or a regulation, you need to have the effect of the law just in case anybody breaks that. So that is the role of APCON. So APCON, in that wise, licenses every, every member agency group that is under the umbrella. But understand that the first point is not APCON. The first point, the first point of engagement for a professional organization is the sectoral group. Yes. So first, you need to be a member of a sectoral group. Yes. And as I painted to you earlier on, you saw what the things you need to fulfill to be an X-Man yes. member, yes. which means that you need to get the X-Man certification before you can then get the APCON certification. Mm -hmm. So X-Man or the sectoral group is the entry point. Yes. And once you get that entry point, you then can then get the license if you qualify. And after you get the license, of course, in terms of then the, what you have on the day, day to day by way of development, by way of uh, um, enhancing and amplifying, all of that happens within the sectoral group. Mm -hmm. While APCON provides that umbre umbrella regulatory function for the whole groups. Mm -hmm. So um, it's mutually beneficial. Okay. Um, it's not either or actually. Um, so. And that's why we, we work together because APCON has the teeth mm. to bite. <laughs> yes, it sure does. <laughs> so I think my last question would be um, based on your wealth of knowledge and experience is for younger people who yeah. are coming into the industry, um, what are there like professional exams, certifications? Mm probably that are like globally acknowledged that yeah. people can take or are they like Nigerian specific exams, African specific exams that we can take to get our own form of certifications? Yeah, there's so many, there's so many. And, and so one of the, um, one of the lines of our agenda as, as a new executive for x men is we want to attract young people want to attract young people from universities, from schools, from out there, because we're talking about brand experience here. And um, we have different bodies and we have different um, groups that offer quality certification. Okay. Um, so X-Man um, partners, for example, at some points with Experiential NG, uh, where 
you have certification certified courses um, which again when you're starting out you can take some of those courses x-man has um, also some programs uh, certification programs mm -hmm. um, in the past and one of the things that we're going to be reawakening is what we call the brand ambassadors program okay um, which is a program that um, allows when you're coming in as a brand ambassador which is sometimes the first interaction between an outsider and the industry sometimes yes. is to work as a brand ambassador in an agency um, so the robust training that you get okay. as a brand ambassador yeah. um, and the certification that you get as a brand ambassador means that you're now ready to start a marketing career mm. um, in the experiential the experiential industry so those are some of the things which um, was actually started uh, this was be about four or five years ago Okay. Uh, but which we're going to empower and do more of um, mm -hmm. so that you have all these multiple certification platforms that allows you to not just um, have the book knowledge but also the practical knowledge with the agencies who are our members. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure Thank you very having much. you on this episode. Thank, Thank you. you very, very Thank much. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Excellent. That brings us to the end of another episode of Below the Line. Bye.